times I was broke. Nice little, little humble video today. You know, it's like one in the morning, you know. I should really be getting to bed in it, but like, I'm on a roll today. I think this is gonna be like my fourth video. I might make a fifth. Man, I like raw. Man, I'm making four or five videos in one day. Yeah. I might also strike while the iron's hot because you lot will see a video get released and just think, yeah, man, just made that video off the dome one take, one time. Nah. Sometimes, a lot of the times, yeah. But there's some days that video that you saw that man made, uh, that was my 20th try. Real talk. Man, I don't know about other YouTubers and that make video in their sleep and that, but there's some days man struggle, you know. There's certain days, like, man can't get past the first minute without having to rewind the thing. So, um, yeah, uh, man's on a roll today. Man's rapping, spitting his poetry and that, it? So, I'm going to go and make this video on it. Um, so, yeah, the times when I was broke. Got my cup of tea, uh, cup of tea for this one. So, mm. Nice, like a humble video anyway, innit? So, boom. So let me just start off by saying it. I ain't rich now and I don't really consider myself to be alright to some degree I'm successful but I'm not at the success that I want to be at but compared to the average person definitely my age 110% I'm successful but I don't really consider myself successful because I feel the word success means you know you've reached the finish line and I mean I'm like 10% there in it so Anyway, boom. So they just start off by saying, um, I've got three properties in it. Got this house. This is a three bed house in Northampton. Uh, I bought it almost five years ago now, and it time gone by just like that, innit? I bought it for 136,000, but then right now it's probably worth 160, 165. Um, yeah, it was worth 136,000 when I bought it. I put down a 10% deposit of 13,600. It's almost a year as well. Next month's gonna be a year since I bought my flat. I bought that for 105,000, but instead of putting down a 10% deposit, a man's put down 25%, which was 26,500. Yeah, so the property was worth 105,000. I put down 26,500. And fucking forgot about, you know, a man's not even doing this thing chronologically. So I bought this property here, this three bed house, 136,000 in 017. And then later on in that year, I bought a property in Egypt. I think it cost me like 8,600 in cash. That was same, 017. And then in 2021, which was obviously last year, man completed on the flat which was uh, 105,000, I had to put down 26,500. Just give you a little rundown in it, you know, just in case you're new to the channel and this is your first time watching, man, in it, yeah, so. Um, yeah, by all means, I don't really say I'm successful in that, but certain man will say, yeah, boom, man's 29 and that, so man, a lot of man will say, yeah, but you're successful, whatever, in it, yeah, so. So, um, yeah, times when I was broken, and that's like a humble video today. Let me take a sip of this tea quickly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's get this thing started, innit? So, uh, yeah, man grew up humble. <laughs> come from a poor family, but come from a nice, good home. Well, no drug dealing in man's yard. Uh, stepdad weren't getting drunk, beating up mum. None of that madness. No scandal. None, yeah, none of that madness or nothing like that, innit? But come from a poor, humble family, innit? Yeah, come from humble beginnings and that, innit? But the first time I realised that, bro, man, he's broke, blood. Like, uh, was during the six weeks holiday. You know when you go from year six to year seven, and I'm sure it was the previous holiday before that as well, wasn't it? But anyway, when I was going from year six to year seven, I realized man is fucking broke. Like man ain't got no money. Obviously, but I'm not working or nothing like that. Man's fucking eleven years old. I don't know about no job. Uh, um, unfortunately, mommy didn't have no money to be giving me pocket money every day during the six week holiday. And I remember, like, a man had like 50p to my name. You know, like, man will find a little change 
that a drop out a man's pocket on the sofa, a man's gone down there and you get me, colour cut my earnings and that. Like, man, man's, <laughs> man, man's accumulating money that way, innit? You're going down the side of the sofa and collecting the, the little pennies and that that's dropping down the side of the sofa and that. But, yeah, I had like 20p, 50p to my name and I didn't know when I was next going to re-up, you know, on the next set of money. Like, man's just looking to buy ice poles and that and that's coming like a, a myth a man can't even really afford to buy ice poles and that so i'm like yeah man is seriously broke man like and you know it wasn't just me obviously in a lot of kids in edmonton grew up poor grew up broke and that. there was one thing if you're from edmonton please in the comment section below if you don't you have to be from edmonton you could be from a local area tottenham or wood green or maybe even enfield if you had links and association down in edmonton Please, in the comment section below, someone tell me that they remember going to Connections uh, on Silver Street at that Howard School. So, Howard School, I'm sure it's still called Gladys Howard now because I, I went there. I went there for about a week and I left and went to Winchmore. But, um, yeah, in Edmonton, there's a school called uh, Gladys Howard or was. That building there, that school is still there, but, you know, they always change their names and that. But, yeah, there was a school called Gladys Howard on Silver Street in Edmonton, near the Great Cambridge Roundabout, there was this thing called Connections. A lot of men used to go there because obviously it was like a, a football thing or whatever, innit? But they used to give the youths free chicken and chips. There's certain men out here, us men were hungry, you know? Like, I don't know where some of you lot's grown up, you know? There's certain people, they, they, their parents really couldn't afford to even feed them lunch, you know? Maybe some idiot look at oven food in the... Uh, you know, like them chips and them dippers and oven frozen pizzas and them frozen pizzas that you put in the oven and that. Maybe their parents could afford to give them that, but their parents couldn't afford to give them £5 a day for uh, lunch money during the six weeks holiday. So a lot of men out here were hungry, you know. So a lot of men used to go to Connections to play football, but they really was there for the free chicken and chips. Like them people there, them youth a worker people them knew what they was doing when they was telling the young black youths at Edmonton and maybe some Tottenham youths and some Wood Green youths. Yeah, come play football at Connections, there's free chicken and chips. That was an incentive. Don't tell a black man that there's free chicken and chips at a venue and don't expect it to turn up. Yeah, so that was the incentive for, for, for a man to go there. Now, I never went there. Um, I just knew man that used to go there for free chicken and chips and that. I think... Everyone in Edmonton, if you didn't go there, you at least knew about it back in the day or whatever. Isn't it? So I'm talking about like in, uh, any anywhere between 2002 to 2005, 2006, plus or minus those years. And that. Um, so, yeah, man, when I was going into year seven, the year 2004, man was broke, man. Man only had like 50p to my name and I was thinking to myself, like, fuck, when am I going to re-up on the next money to get ice poles and that man was struggling throughout the six weeks holiday um again throughout year seven man was broke mommy couldn't afford to give man no money or nothing like that man's a bit brass in it um yeah but it was a good thing that man was broke though because it taught me to it put me in a position where boy my, my mom can't afford to give me no money uh, and there's something else I'm going to touch on in a minute as well. Uh, my mom couldn't afford to give me no money in that. So, man had to, from the end of year seven and definitely the beginning of year eight, man had to buy and sell crispy drinks in school. Um, that's how I made my money in school. Now, that's why I've always been financially independent or dependent on myself, whatever you want to call it. I've been smart with money because I had to earn my own money. Uh, therefore, you know, I had to respect my own money in that. So, yeah, but another thing that really made me realise that I was broke, uh, yeah, around about the same time, the six weeks holiday and that, when man was going into year seven, a little bit before that as well, like, man had a cousin, childhood cousin that man grew up with and that, and to be fair, like, as a youth, like, me, I consider myself to be on the short end of the scale, whatever, and I'm five foot nine, but when I was a youth, I wasn't a short you or nothing like that. No one could look at man and say, oh, yeah, you're a, you're a short you. He's going to be short when he's older. No, no, no. Um, but I always had small feet for my height, regardless. So I had a cousin who was like a, a size and a half bigger than man. And I beg someone else in the comment section below, it, yeah, please write down that you, re you remember them trainers, them total 90, 
uh, Astros. You know them Astro turf trainers that everyone used to rock. Man used to wear them, and not to play football. Man used to wear them like they were fucking air forces, just out and about. So yeah, them total ninety trainers were whenever them total ninety trainers were about and they were popular. That's when man had them in it. But man had a cousin, and he had a couple pairs of total nineties that was a size and a half uh, bigger than man in it. So it was a case where, or he was a size and a half bigger than me. So it was a case where when his trainers got a bit too small for, for him, he used to kind of pass them down to me. So kind of like some handy downies thing. And that's quite embarrassing because, you know, I'm sure I told my mum, like, oh, you know, my man gave me his trainers and that. And I don't really think my mum, well, my mum, I know 110% my mum didn't take them away from me and dash them in the bin and say, come on, man, fix up. Why are you taking the next person's trainers and that? I think my mum just kind of allowed it, like, yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? And that's, that's kind of embarrassing. That's kind of like one of them kind of like cringe moments in that. Because me, God forbid man's in a position where my youth has to get hand me downy trainers from another family member or whatever, innit? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. So that's that's another time where I'm like, yeah, bro, man was really broken that way. It's like, man ain't even getting, man not even have no continuous, and I'm not saying unlimited or nothing like that, but, Man can't get trainers, uh, I won't even call it on demand. Just like, man can't even get trainers when I need, really, because it gone broke mummy them pocket and that. Next time I realised that I was broke, I mean, like, after school, obviously, when I've gone into college and that, well, <laughs> I ain't going to be buying and selling crisper drinks in college. Like, certain people in my year group made a joke. And they said, you know what, yeah, Jay, when he even goes to college, he's going to be buying and selling crisp and drinks at college and that. They, man used to make jokes and say, oh boy, Jay, I know Jay don't want to leave this school because, boy, he ain't going to be making no money and that. So, um, yeah, after I left school, which was in 09, uh, started college in 09, obviously later on in that year, like September, October times. Uh, obviously, man was still able to retain a lot of the money that I made from school, but... And, you know, props to myself, innit? Like, when I was 15 years old, I had 1,500 to my name, you know? Like, that's, that's a fucking achievement, to be able to accumulate that money, save it, and don't spend it stupidly, especially coming from a poor household. And like, You know how black people are, get a little bit of money, have to show the whole world that they're rich now, or they got money, or whatever. Really. So, um, but yeah, money don't last forever, and that. And, well, you're in college, you ain't working. So man had to apply for this thing called EMA. Um, I don't know if they do anything the equivalent of EMA now, but yeah, man used to apply for EMA or whatever. And I think it was like thirty pound every two weeks or thirty pound every week. Nah, that would have been too much. Probably I think it was thirty pound every two weeks or whatever. Um, yeah, they come to. I'm sure they came a time where all my money was gone, um, just spent it and that. So one man's in college, seventeen, eighteen, and then that. Man's broke and that, but at the same time, man's doing little dodgy dealings and that. Man, I don't want to say it, but just get me do the maths. Man's spoken about man's past doing dodgy dealings in the past anyway, innit? But man's doing things where get me man's packing up and looking over man's shoulder in alleyways and that, innit? So do the maths, innit? So yeah, that's the next time I was uh, realised I was broke was when I was in college and that. Man had to apply for EMA. Uh, yeah, apply for EMA. I think it was £30 every two weeks and that. Next time I realised I was broke, so this is all along like the same kind of timeline or whatever, in it, car. Man got myself into some troubles and that, and get me. Man thought, oh, dealing with beef on the road was more important than college and that. So, um, yeah, cut the long story short. Next thing you know, man's in jail, skip bail, police are after man, handing myself in. Well, no, I didn't hand myself in to the police station. I was out. In the countryside, get me doing more dodgy dealings and that, and the police then caught me and brought me back to, uh, yeah, London. <laughs> so um, no, I didn't even have myself in. There was a warrant out for my arrest. I skipped bail. Um, all, all like yeah, all, all kinds of nonsense and that. Yeah, didn't turn up to the police station and all that kind of nonsense and that. So anyway, uh, yeah. Next thing I know, man's just ended up in jail, and um, yeah, I think I, when I went jail, the day before I went jail. I must have went and emptied out my savings account 
which was like 50 pound, yeah, in it because man was on job seekers allowance as well before, innit? Yeah, that, that, that's the next thing. A man was on job seekers allowance before, and you know, I was getting like 104 pound every two weeks or whatever it was. And again, man was using that little bit of money to you get me start up a line if you get what I'm trying to say in it, you get my first cue and that and you get me, but business weren't going too well for me. So yeah, end up in jail. Uh, you know, day before I went to jail, I must have emptied out my bank account it was like fifty pounds. Took it with me because I know I was going to jail the next day. And um, yeah, fifty pounds don't last too long on your canteen sheet. So <laughs> man's there. On the phone, took it to a man's mum, like, yeah, mum, can you send me a postal order and that? Uh, man, I had to even phone up my cousin. Uh, respect to my cousin, Devon, in this is man's long time cousin, man grew up with, innit? Like, man phoned him up, I think it was a couple of weeks before I came out of jail, innit? And he sent me £50 or whatever, innit? But, see, this, this, this is why going to jail is long, bro. This is why going to jail is long, especially if you don't have no fucking money to bring in with you. Because you're going to be broke on the inside, you're going to be phoning, man, phoning your mum. If you've got a gal phoning your brethren, phoning your family members, cousins and that, they know any time that your phone, like that prison number comes, ah, oh, that Jay's phoning me again, oh, he wants £50, £20 and that. You become like a beggar and that. I mean, I was in there for such a short period of time that I couldn't even get a job on the wing. So, like, there's people that can get jobs on the wing where they go and they clean the wing or they might work in the kitchen, work on surgery and that, um, or do some little tasks and jobs around the prison and that. I didn't have those privileges. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be in jail for that long. But still, um, you can still be broke for three months or whatever, innit? And not have no job opportunities in there. And if you ain't got no one sending you money in jail, you're going to be on like a pound, two pound a, a, a week or something dumb. They give you some basic money or whatever, innit? So, um, yeah, that's the next time man realised that man was broke. The next time while I was broke, and I made myself intentionally broke as well, um... I mean, it weren't too, too bad or whatever, innit? Because man still had a job. I was an apprentice these times. Um, there's this bike called a Yamaha R125. Right now, I've got the R6. So, I used to have the R125. And the bike, I think I bought it for 1700 And I literally had about just over 1700 And, um, yeah, I spent all my money on this motorbike. And I left myself with basically, I don't know, maybe a hundred pound or 60, 70 pound or something like that. But it weren't too, too bad because I was working at a full-time job at the time. Obviously still living at my mum's yard and that in it. But um, yeah, man went and bought the bike and yeah, left myself almost penniless or whatever. Next time when I realised that man was, uh, or next time I made myself broke or I was broke or whatever. Yeah, this again, I made myself intentionally broke. Um, I've already done bought this property now, and it's so in 2017, Man bought this property. The man still had peas after this, and man still had money after this. But I had about maybe 10, 12 grand left, and I said to myself, you know what, yeah, I'm not working at this moment in time. And basically, my monthly outgoings is like a thousand pounds, and I'm not working, no money's coming in, but money's going out. So basically, I've got 10 months of this fucking about. I need to get rid of this money to put myself in a position where, you know, I need to put myself in a position where I can get drive to go out and work and get a job and that. Because me, if I've got a safety net, this is what I'm saying, the comfort zone is the danger zone. If you've got a safety net, you're not going to want to go out. You're not going to be hungry to go out and work. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like, So, me, if, I'm, if I've got a safety net and I'm in a comfort zone, that's the danger zone, car. You can get a bit lazy and that. So, I said to myself, you know what, I need to get rid of this money so I put myself in a position where I'm hungry to go out and get jobs and work and all that. So what I did was I bought that property in Egypt, spent 8600 or whatever. And um, yeah, once I transferred the rest of this money, that was it. Man literally had £200 to my name. Luckily, obviously, man set myself up and started getting jobs and that. But these times, man's still getting fired from jobs, you know, because... Just because I'm broke, that don't mean I can't take shit from any managers or any colleagues or anything. So, man's getting these jobs, but man's getting fired and that. But, um, yeah, that that was mad. I remember I was working for this company called Polytech, which started at like 7 in the morning. 
and um, finish at about 4, 4.30. I will go home for two hours and then I will leave my yard and go to like, there's this place called Poplar and do other little jobs here and there. But anyway, man used to leave my yard and go and do private jobs. Man will be on these private jobs, get there at like 7.30, 8 o'clock. Man will be on these private jobs until midnight, 12.30, 1 in the morning, you know. I have to go home, fucking go sleep quickly and then get up for like five, six in the morning and then go to work again. Man was doing that, like not every day or whatever. Man done that a few times, but like man had to do that because man was broke. Man was broke, man was broke, man was broke, man. But you know what? Yeah, sometimes yeah, it's good to be broke for a little bit so you can just, you know, it's good. Like I like reminiscing about them times when man was not necessarily broke, but the grind that I had to do to get out of being broke and that. Yeah, man, that was cool, man. Like, yeah, I really remember like leaving my job, going home quickly, eating, maybe relaxing about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, and then have to hit the road again, get to the private job at like 7.30. Man, I was just working in a, a community centre on my own, you know, uh, in the basement as well, technically. And um, yeah, man, I was just installing lights and that in this community centre in the basement at like midnight, you know, man's leaving, getting home at one in the morning, have to go sleep quickly, get a few hours sleeping and then boom, back on the job and that. Um, yeah, those, those, those were the times where like, I, I realised like, yeah, man's broke and that. So man's had to make this video just to make people know like, blood, just because man's sitting on this, man's got that. Man didn't always start off with this. Remember, like, let me just make one thing clear right now. Yeah, remember this. I remember this forever. And yeah, no one gave me a Ross Clark penny. No one gave me a penny towards none of these yards. Not one pound. Not one pence towards this house, my flat, or my property in Egypt. Man, done it all myself. So if I can do it, you can. It don't matter if you come from a poor family. It don't matter if. Get me, there's, there's some families out there like where like, the oldest siblings out of the, the five don't eat because there ain't enough food to go around because mummy's broke, daddy's poor. De Furthermore, daddy's not even around. You get me, it's just mum struggling on her own. She got a two bed yard, but she got five pitney in her. So, yeah, just because you come from a poor family and that, don't mean you can't make nothing of yourself. Man's a fucking proof in that. Yeah, man's had to make this video on it. Um, I'll see after this if I can, if 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 I make the next video or not. But yeah, stay wise. Done now.